Welcome everyone to today's webinar on emergency response for severe weather with Focus FS, where our hosts, Shane Babno and Glennis Strang, will have a discussion about the Focus FS platform and how an operation can use this cloud-based EHS service to plan, respond, and continuously improve upon an emergency severe weather situation. Now, before handing things over to them, I'd like to point out that while everyone is currently muted, you can still type questions into the chat in the upper right-hand side and we'll answer them at the end of the webinar. So let's meet our presenters. Shane is a board certified safety professional that has worked in the oil and gas industry for 10 years, promoting new technologies and implementing change within these organizations. Currently, he's a senior safety consulting manager with Draeger. In this role, he provides support for key accounts throughout Louisiana. Shane has successfully coordinated hurricane pre preparation efforts and is constantly looking for ways to improve these processes for frontline employees to drive change. So he's got skin in the game. Glennis is a customer success manager at Focus FS with a Bachelor of Technology degree from Memorial University of Newfoundland. With more than five years of experience in customer relations and sales management, Glennis uses her extensive knowledge of safety software and in-depth attention to detail to help Focus FS clients around the globe achieve their safety and productivity goals. And waiting in the wings to jump in at a moment's notice is Jeff Brown, president and co-founder of Focus FS. Jeff has over 22 years of experience in the tech sector, including multiple leadership and technology consulting roles. He co-founded Focus FS, a software company focused on improving safety outcomes for industrial work sites. So without further ado, let's hand it over to Shane and Glennis. All right, thank you everybody for taking your time out of your day to attend our webinar. Um, I first want to talk a little bit about who Focus FS is, why we're on the call here with Drager. So Focus FS was founded in 2012 and we're located in St. John's, Newfoundland. We develop and design a cloud-based software with the goal to connect people, the assets and processes while offering operational excellences, reducing your costs, and improving safety outcomes. Now, Drager and Focus FS have a lot of things that they share in common, which, which, which makes this partnership so great. Uh, we have the same ideas in safety and providing safety solutions to our customers. Um, they're experts in their field of hardware, and we are experts in our field of software. So we came together to form a great partnership uh, to provide better solutions for um, all of you guys and future customers. So when we developed this solution for severe weather, there are three things that we took into account, uh, and we broke it out into three buckets. So the first thing that we considered was how do we get people prepared for severe weather? What are the important things to consider? Um, such as people, your assets, and your work site, um, and how do you guys get prepared for uh, severe weather or hurricanes? The next bucket we wanted to look at is respond. So once severe weather hits your site, how do you guys respond? Um, what actions can you take within the software to better collect data during severe weather? And then bundling those two things together, we get to improve. So how do you prove, improve your processes for the next severe weather incident that may hit your site? Uh, what are the lessons learned? How can we improve safety and how can we help drive safety culture on your work site? So as uh, Ryan mentioned, Shane has uh, previous, previous experience with working on site during hurricanes. So uh, Shane, do you wanna tell us a little bit about that experience and um, your role on site during the hurricanes? Yes, well, first off, thank you, Glennis um, and Ryan for kicking this off. Um, so as they mentioned, you know, I helped manage the hurricane response efforts at a major refinery that actually shut down um, for Hurricane Ida back in 2021 when it made landfall as a Category 4. Um, not only did that site that I worked at shut down, but six major uh, refineries in the southeast Louisiana that were affected had to shut down. And they accounted for about uh, 1.7 million barrels per day of oil. Um, so when you look at you know, severe weather preparation and response. Um, the oil and gas industry along the Gulf Coast and kind of the eastern seaboard, um, the number one threat is probably hurricanes. Um, these storms are unpredictable. They can intensify rapidly and they can cause a great deal of damage. I mean, obviously, um, as you most of you may know, but your bigger refiners and chemical plants, they all do a really good job of preparing for these events. And they, you know, if it's 
a big enough storm, they should shut down prior to the impact of that storm. However, the event management aspect post hurricane, you know, from my experience, it can be, it can be extremely difficult to facilitate that because um, that can be, you know, days to weeks of managing that response. So for me, you know, talking from my experience, um, hurricane response efforts following, following Ida were tricky um, since the storm, you know, decided to remain a category two in, you know, so southeast Louisiana for about 10 hours, which was unexpected. This was not, you know, anticipated, you know, the, the tracks had it moving, you know, just through the area, maybe an hour or two and, and does its damage and moving on. But with that, it brought, you know, way more down, way more wind down power lines, obstructions. So the response, you know, it hindered the response for these um, refineries and then the refinery that I worked at. Um, and then immediately following the, um, the wake of the storm response teams, work to get personnel back on site because that's the main thing is get a, you know safely get people back on site uh, assess and repair the damage and restore utilities um, you know they need to get utilities to be able to um, fix those units that may be down um, but it just shows hurricane Ida just shows you know why it, it's so important to have a response plan and to make sure that you're able to manage this so that when it comes time to repair and respond that you're ready to, to do that and you could do it safely and effectively. Um, and then, you know, as we look at Focus FS, tools such as that can help us or help, you know, refineries expedite response times after major storms. Um, but it can also streamline the planning and response information during the entire process of that uh, event. So. I'm sure you guys have pre-planning forms and documentation and stuff that you guys had to follow as well. Um, so when you're planning for, you know, a hurricane or severe weather, um, what kind of pre-planning do you guys have to follow to make sure that you're ready for when that severe weather hits? So your major facilities do have many pre-planning documents um, that are filled out, you know, prior to the hurricane season, because if you just, you know, react and you're not ready, you know, you mm -hmm. can be kind of caught um, you know, in a bad predicament. So, you know, you do have to have checklists, you have to look at equipment, you have to look at your, you know, areas to make sure that they're, you know, de-inventoried or shutting down and there's checklists and forms and staffing that, you know, that you have to go through before the season. Um, and those can be instrumental to ensure that they're successful in the aftermath of the hurricane. Uh, for me, the logistics of organizing all those pre-planning documents and you know, using email and file folder, it, it, you know, it was kind of antiquated, but that's how I did it. And that's, you know, what we used at the time. Um, and it was a little bit kind of overwhelming um, to say the least, especially since, you know, I felt prepared. And then when Ida hit, you know, it was kind of like, oh man, it's actually happening. So, um, so before the storm, it was sort of up to me as the facility hurricane response administrator to sort of orchestrate the successful planning, the pre-planning season. Um, and then once the storm hit, each department within the facility began, began to immediately respond. So, you know, they're kind of doing their own thing, but it felt nearly impossible to um, keep everything organized and on track. Cause it's like, okay, they're doing this, they're moving this equipment. Okay, what about this checklist? Who's looking at what? And it was all coming through one person. Well, that's 24 seven. Once the storm hits, it's, it's nonstop. Um, mm -hmm. so when I looked at, when I started to look at focus FS, I think it could be a huge benefit for facility admins who have to organize that because it can do it for you. And it's all in one place. 100%. Um, is it, it, if you would like to now, um, I would like, if you can show us how we can do that. 100%. So yeah, so I'm going to show you exactly how um, the software is going to address a lot of those pain points that Shane said. So, you know, um, overwhelming with forms and emails, um, storing everything, you know, in multiple different places and not being able to have access to those things potentially. Um, so I'm going to walk you through the system, uh, show you exactly how we laid it out and plan for you guys to use it. So what you're looking at here is what we call our main dashboard. So this first dashboard that you see when you log in is a hub of all the different information that pulls from different areas of our software. So what this is meant to do is you can tailor this page to your role. Each of these uh, squares here that you see on your screen are what we call tiles. 
Um, they can be added and replaced with different ones that show different data. So you can tailor your dashboard to the role that you play on site. Um, so you're not seeing things that you don't need to see and you're only seeing what's important to you. The system can also break down uh, your data per you know, department or per, per department or work site. So however you guys would like to organize your uh, company within the system, um, we can divide it up so it's not an overwhelming amount of data all in one project, but you can still have access to every department if needed. So that's one of the ways that we can organize the data for you so it's a little less overwhelming. So you can see here the different uh, modules that we have in the system. Uh, a couple of these are used in the severe weather solution, which I'm going to go through today um, and show you how we kind of pull it all together to make a overall solution. So the first place that I want to show you is the health and safety and environment module. Now, as Shane said, you know, pre-planning involves a lot of forms and checklists and a lot of sites will use, you know, emails, um, SharePoint, all those different types of platforms um, to host all of this data. So what we've done is we've taken all these forms, whether they're on paper or digital, um, and put them in one place where everybody will have access to them. And the cool thing in the system is that you're actually able to assign forms to specific supervisors. So if you have people who are responsible for filling out these forms, you can assign them the forms. Um, they're going to be able to see on their account that they have forms that they need to complete. And you can also track their progress. So down at the bottom, you can see here we have uh, progress for individuals and also for um, individual forms. So this is what it looks like. Um, this is to just help drive that safety culture across your site. You know, Shane was mentioning earlier about how, you know, it was kind of all on him to facilitate preparing for severe weather. Um, this way you have data transparency across your entire site. Um, so you're able to track the progress of everybody and the responsibility of getting prepared for severe weather um, gets expanded over multiple different people. So it's not just on, you know, the shoulders of one person. Um, and this is, again, just to help track your progress, help drive your safety cultures, share the responsibility amongst many team members, um, so the weight doesn't feel so heavy on that one person. So this is what a typical form would, could look like for, uh, you know, checklists and things like that. You can see here we have the pass-fail uh, components, we have the text components. Um, there are also many other different types of components that we have in here as well, such as photo taking, the ability to have signatures in there, uh, text boxes for comments, all sorts of different stuff. And in our software, you can actually build these forms yourself. So you don't have to come back to us to um, build your forms or update your forms if your processes have changed from the previous year. All this stuff you can do yourself in the software. And what you're looking at here on the bottom right hand side is what we call our actions. So if any of these items in the form has failed, um, you would immediately get prompted to create an action to address the item that has failed. So what you're going to do is you're going to give it an action name, you're going to assign a person who's responsible, give them a due date when you need to have the task done by, um, a description, you can add a photo, um, and it's going to require a signature as well. So just giving this person who has to complete the task as much information as they as you can, um, so they're able to complete it in a timely manner. So once you submit this form, that action is now going to be logged in our system, and the person who's responsible is going to be able to see that on their dashboard. So when they log in, it creates like a, a task list for them to tackle, um, and they can prioritize it by due date or importance. Um, and then everything will get done. But also it shows full data transparency because you can see what others have been assigned. Um, they can see what they've been assigned and due dates. So nothing falls in the cracks um, like, it, like it potentially could with emails or um, other forms of you know, sharing this data. It's all in one place so nothing gets missed. And, and I just want to add to that, you know, a big lesson learned was transparency of that data during the storm. You know, pre-event it's like, hey, yeah, it's, it's important to do this, but then everyone wants to know the status of that and the availability of that is super important. That was, like I said, one of the biggest things I learned, especially for upper management who are going through and making, you know, key decisions. So I like that aspect of it. For sure. Yeah. Data transparency in a time where you need to be prepared is super important. Um, just, you know, tracking that progress and making sure nothing gets missed 100%. Um, the next thing that I want to show you guys here is our equipment page. So this is where you're going to be tracking all of your assets on site. 
Um, again, this is just the main dashboard. Um, you can see a bunch of different tiles here with a bunch of different information, like inspection reports and inventory and things like that. So the first place that I want to bring you to is the equipment inventory. So this is a very quick page that you can go to um, to check to see what exactly it is you have on site. Now, we understand that you could have you know, hundreds of pieces of equipment. So what we've done is we've built into the system filtering options so that you can filter out and find exactly what you need to see so you don't have to scroll through a big massive list. Now, I do wanna talk about a couple of things that are on the screen here so you can quickly see you know, the status of the equipment. That pulls from your inspection form. So if you have a green check mark, you're good to go. You can see the red uh, exclamation point there, which means that an action has, uh, a piece of equipment has failed, sorry. Um, so you're able to quickly see the status of your equipment. You're quickly able to see the verification. So uh, I'll touch on that in a little bit to, to explain more what verification is. Um, and you're also able to see location, which is super important. Um, you know, through my sh chats with Shane, you know, he said things can get moved and, and people can be unaware if, you know, pumps get moved, generators get moved around and things like that. Um, so just knowing where your equipment is at all time is super important, especially when you're getting ready to prepare for some severe weather. So also I want to ask mm -hmm. you a question about that so you know you, you look at the equipment it's super important like you said and, and like we discussed previously um but post event post storm especially with high winds and um down power lines you're going to have loss of power you're going to have um no wi-fi can can you actually get into this system and utilize it in that type of scenario yeah 100 percent. so uh, what we've done in the system is built in what we call offline mode. So if you lost network, if you lost power, um, you don't have to worry. You can still fill in, you know, you can still record locations of equipment. You can still inspect equipment, uh, create actions, all that stuff. What's going to happen is you're going to fill in all this information and it's going to store on your device. So if you're using a tablet or a laptop, um, all the information is going to be stored there. And then once you guys get your network back up and running, your Wi-Fi back up and running, all that information is then going to be pushed to the cloud and it's going to be shared across, you know, your entire system. So we we, we took into account the fact that, you know, you're not probably not going to have Wi-Fi um, all the time during severe weather, like you said, Shane, with high winds and things like that. So that's where the offline mode comes into play. So verification. Um, so you, the last slide you've seen had all of your equipment listed out uh, and the locations. So what verification is, is to prepare for severe weather. You wanna make sure that your inventory lists are accurate. You wanna make sure that your locations are accurate. So what we've built here is a way that you would go out in the field and you would physically look at the piece of equipment. So you're physically gonna look at the generator. You're physically gonna look at the pump. You're gonna assign it a location the date and the time, so it's all date and timed. And you're just gonna select a piece of equipment from the list. You can either search for it or you can scan it uh, with barcode or RFID if you use it already on your site, we can accommodate that as well. Um, and you're just gonna you know, verify that it is where it says it is, your lists are gonna be accurate, um, nothing's been moved or anything like that. So it's just another precaution to repair your site for, you know, having to respond to severe weather and making sure you have everything that you need. Um, if you notice anything is missing or you know you can't find it, then you're able to you know replenish or buy more if you need to. Um, or if you find it in another location, you can move it back. So there's just another pre-precaution that we've built into the system to prepare you guys. So once you know where all your equipment is and what you have on site, the next thing you might be interested in is inspection. So making sure that all of your uh, assets are fit for work and they're operational. So what you're looking at here is a very standard inspection form that we have. Um, again, we have the pass, fail, and make component built in here, and we have three options. So pass, you know, equipment's in operational order, good to go, fail, it needs some repairs, can't be put in operation. And we also have pass with conditions, with, which means the asset can work and run under you know standard operational standards um, but there may be very minor things wrong with it so uh, paint might be peeling off or a sticker might be becoming loose so it can pass inspection but there are minor things that you want to address so that's what the status you would give it and then you would 
you know, drive your actions, um, get those things taken care of, reinspect it, and give it a pass. Alrighty, so now that we have our people prepared, we have our, sorry, we have our site prepared, we have our assets prepared, now we're going to look at our people. Are our people on site ready for when severe weather hits? So what we built into the system is a training module. So this just tracks your overall compliance on site. Um, you know, you're getting ready to uh, create your staffing lists and things like that for the event. You want to make sure that everybody has the correct training that they need. So this is where you would find that information. You can see if training is expired, expiring or missing, and you can also see the role that they play on site. So if you need specific skills during an event, um, you can check, double check your training records, make sure you know they have the training and they're the right roles, and then assign them to work uh, the day of the severe weather or the day of the hurricane. Um, just keeping everything all in one place. So now that we're fully prepared from our site to our assets to our people, now we're going to sort of move into the respond bucket. So severe weather has hit, the hurricane has hit land, um, you know, your site is as, as prepared as it can be. So how do you respond to if something happens on site, you know, a fire has broken out, there's been a gas leak, things like that. You can start by filling out our flash report, our incident management system. Um, this is going to keep all your data in one place. You're going to be able to do, you know, track equipment damages, uh, statements from people who are involved in events. You know, you want to make sure you get that data right away because you don't want people having to rely on giving you their statement a couple weeks down the road when everything is settled down. Um, you want just it to be accurate and you want it to be all in one place. So this is where you can do all that. So as we were preparing for um, this webinar, myself and Shane, we started chatting about this mapping feature, um, and he had a lot of really great points when we were chatting about it. So Shane, do you want to walk us through this scenario that we have built um, in the webinar for today? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Glenn. So um, as we, you know, sort of playing around just with the capabilities of the mapping potential, you know, this is really cool. So like I had mentioned, once the storm hits, you know, people are going home to 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 sleep. You know, sometimes they're they're staged at the facility. But once you start getting personnel back on site, you know, it, it's cool that you can go into the software and you can see everything. We talk about transparency. So, you know, if you have a refuge area, so we played around, we showed um on the icon, you can see at the, the kind of the top of your the map here, you can show where the hurricane response team may be staged. If that location is not accessible or, or damaged, you may need to move um, to a different location than the facility. You can see where your rescue equipment is and, and you can see that um, you know, towards your eastern side of, of the image here. So um, not only that, so as I mentioned, um, Hurricane Ida unexpectedly had so much wind and there had tons of obstructions from down power lines, you know, in the facility, you had so many utility lines that were just down and you couldn't access uh, certain areas of the facility. So you can actually go in and show where those obstructions may be because you, um, you know, you want your personnel, your oper operators or your maintenance folks to be able to get to um, places safely. So in the morning, they can come in, log into the system and see what the status of the roadways are. You can have barricades. You can actually show, um, like I said, those down power lines or utility lines. Another feature that um, we wanted to, to show is that you can actually, you know, draw out those routes. So you can show via the, the green marker uh, to show where you can access, um, say, one of the units. And this was one of the cooler features that, you know, Glennis and I discussed. So you can actually document um, the peak readings. You can actually, if your facility is doing gas detection, so post-event, Say you have a hydrocarbon leak or something and you want to do some area monitoring 24 7. well you can go out you can do the monitoring but you have a the portal here and, and on the map you can actually show uh via the icon you can see kind of in the, the center part of the map if you go to the next slide so those peak readings like i had mentioned say you have some lel in the area maybe you want to go do some benzene uh, checks with a pid or you know, you have some H2S, so you know that you want to keep that area barricaded from people that are responding, and until you can actually safely get into 
you know, isolate the, the leak or find out where, where the source of the emissions are. Um, also, you can manage it to where if you need to send personnel in, you can show that as well. So you can have rescue personnel or you can have, like I said, the uh, area monitoring team that's using the gas detection at the facility. So it's really, you know, a, a, a cool um, user friendly system that is, is very tailored to those facilities and you can use it. Like I said, it's really beneficial. Say, you know, corporate is, is flying in, they want to log in and see what the status of, you know, the unit is, you know, this is where we're at and we're actually documenting here on this map. So really cool feature of uh, Focus FS. Alrighty, thanks Shane. Well, I just want to thank everybody for uh, their time today um, and for attending this webinar from myself and from Shane. Yeah, so thanks everyone for joining. Um, just one last thing is, you know, I think the biggest thing post event is they want to get the units up and the refinery up and running as quickly as possible, but also as safe as possible. So when you utilize tools, when you utilize things correctly, you can do that. You can be efficient. Um, but like Glennis said, you know, thank you for your time and please ask questions. Um, that's what these are for. These are for, you know, learning and this is how we get better as an industry. So we definitely appreciate everyone's involvement. Thank you, Shane, and thank you, Glennis. Well done, both of you. We actually have two questions. Uh, the first question is, does Focus FS inventory list and users HR profiles get integrated from these inventory HR platforms automatically, daily, or in real time? Yeah, so um, there are abilities for us to integrate with your external systems. Um, what we could do also is upload the equipment into Focus FS as well, and you guys can maintain your assets uh, directly within Focus FS. Um, but we can also look at the integrations to the systems that you already use and you already have on site for sure. It's perfect. And uh, the second and last question is actually, uh, how long does it take to integrate uh, the platform into an existing one or from scratch? And how long let me see if i'm reading this right and what is uh the service like with the platform so i guess what they're trying to say is yeah what is yep yeah, right what is your what is your service agreement so for the first part for how long does it take um that varies depending on what kind of system you use everyone is unique we would have to assess it figure out how we would want to share the data between the two systems um so that would have to you know we would have to look at it and see what you guys use and go from there um as for the service agreement uh just very high level stuff you know we don't charge per user we charge per work site so you don't have to worry about um having you know a set number of users you can have as many as you need and the purpose of that is because we don't want people you know sharing user ids we want your data to be accurate uh, we don't want people, you know, needing access and not being able to have it. So just we eliminated it all together and we charged it, you know, per worksite. Um, and also the amount of data that you enter as well is um, unlimited amount of data. You can enter as much as you need. And again, that kind of goes back to your data integrity. Uh, we want to make sure that you're entering everything that you guys need to see and you're not, you know, having to limit yourselves and limit the amount of data that you enter. So free range there as well. That's perfect. Well, thank you, Glennis, and thank you, Shane. Thank you, everyone, today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining today's webinar. It has been recorded, and it will be available on Drigger's YouTube channel in a week's time. Thank you again, and have a safe day. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everyone.